Um, next up, Man City versus Crystal Palace. 14 to 1 for Crystal Palace, close to 15 yeah. to 1. <laughs> Is that a bit unfair? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I think it's a bit ridiculous. I think it's fair. I think, I think, it's fair. I, I think considering the fact that also Crystal Palace, regardless of them playing so well, they, um, they, they're not winning games, you know. I yeah. think Riviera has them playing really well, but they seem to be drawing and drawing and drawing. They're not being able to push over the line and getting a win. And I think Man City might be really upset from losing the Carabao Cup because they feel they're a strong side. Uh, Mars was in the I was going to say, Shakes. Yeah. No, I was going to say, the strength of that, I was, I was like really surprised by their loss last night. <laughs> yeah, and who doesn't want to win the Carabao yeah. Cup, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you, you, like you say, Crystal Palace is the almost yeah. nearly team, isn't it? They've drawn four on the on the trot. Yeah, yeah, they've drawn four on the trot. You're right, and that's the thing. He's finding hard to find wins, and I think he's not going to find one this weekend. I think City might just be too strong. If it was at Crystal Palace's home ground, maybe I would have sided a little bit with him, but with Patrick Vieira, but I, I think City wins this one comfortably. 3-0. Yep, bang for me. 3-0 is, is my call. I, 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 I reckon Palace maybe sneak a goal, but three goals for City, 3-1. Okay. <laughs> What's up next there? <laughs> Watford Southampton, what a game. Yeah. What Yay, a game. The big one. This is the biggest game of the weekend. Was the banker. <laughs> well, <laughs> who wants to start off? Um, I'll start off next game. Tottenham, Man United. <laughs> well, Watford hammered. <laughs> I mean, talk about strange results. Uh, Everton two one. I don't think so. I wouldn't say they were cruising, but you know, two one. You don't expect to yeah. come back from having a dinner or a lunch or whatever you're doing and seeing five two Watford. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. I mean, the whole someone upset the footballing gods in in uh, in Liverpool and. Uh, and that was the result, you know. Yeah, you've described that one perfectly. <laughs> it's one of those bizarre results. How much do you, Shakes, how much do you take from a result like that, though? You know, is it an anomaly? Is it the, you know, is it like the 7-0 of Aston Villa Liverpool last year, the 6-1 of Spurs United, 5-2 of City Leicester, or or Watford gaining some steam? <laughs> uh, look, I mean, I think, you're, I think you're right, Oliver, because it is a bit of a surprise that he... And Alfred Benitez's team conceded five goals at home. I'm, I'm surprised. I was, when it was 2-1 and I thought 63 minutes, they leading. They know there's no way Watford come back from this. And then eventually they went on to score four more goals. I did warn Winning people game, not to bet on Everton goal. last week. Mm. Exactly. I think, I think it gives them more confidence. I think it gives them confidence going into the Southampton game. And I think they might make it two wins on the spin. I think Watford wins this one this weekend as well. Because it's just that confidence. That confidence. Yeah, Ward Prowse is still out. Who's a, a huge part of the Southampton team. You know, Southampton haven't performed well this year, you know. There's yeah. nothing about them that screams out to me that they're, uh, they're a quality side. Though They too tend to have, um, you know, Watford haven't beaten them in... Uh, uh, Watch haven't beaten them since 2017. Mm. Yeah, I find it it's tough to argue with history, though, in a game like this. You know. Well, I'm not going to watch it. I'm just going to say that it's going to be a draw, and if it was a nil-all draw, it wouldn't surprise me. So, uh, I'll go with the I'll go with the draw, for lack of of, of, of better information. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, okay, I'm going to I'm going to side with you on that one too. Hmm. One all. One all. Now, <laughs> the next game up, Man United at away to Tottenham, and Man United are favoured. I don't know what the bookies are smoking these days. Um, United, United have serious, serious problems in that midfield. You know, like not to to state the obvious, but I mean, it's an obvious thing that is. That is, a, it, it's, you know, it's as big a problem as not as as Liverpool's defensive issues were last year. You know, if if you've got if you've got the sort of attacking power that United has, you need to have the solidity in midfield to unlock that. 
and they don't, you know. Um, Fred's definitely not the answer. <laughs> uh, Van der Beek's got no, I think, like eight minutes of game time this Premier League. They had yeah. Phil McTominay playing last week. I mean, Pogba's out now because he's because he got the red card. Um, what are your What are your thoughts on that, Shakes? Well, like, how do you, how do you remedy that when you've got sort of wingers and centre forwards of the quality that United do, but no clear answer in the midfield? What's What's the way forward? Yeah, I, I, I probably would have to say to all of that, I saw her, who was not setting them properly. I think everybody was shocked that when they played against Liverpool, they were pressing all of a sudden. And everybody knows that to play as the you sort of sit back and wait for the count of the transition. And he sort of changed his ways. And I, I think he, yeah, I think that hurts him as well. I, I don't know if he's going to approach this game the same way that he approached the, the Liverpool game. So Pogba is out. I think we will see Scott Patomini and Fred starting game again. Um, and probably just Bruno Fernandes just in front of them and see what happens from then on. But Tottenham as well. I mean, Oliver, I don't know if you watched Tottenham this season. They're not yep. so great either. No, they're yeah, not. They're not yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they haven't. They yeah, haven't. Both teams. And here's a funny, here's another stat for you guys. Both teams have conceded 10 plus goals in the last five games. Yeah, and the thing is, at least Tottenham were at least scoring last season, you know. Really been this season. And they're, they're frustrating. I mean, they must be hell of a frustrating as a Spurs supporter to watch. But they're frustrating from the sense that, like, every time, you know, I've watched the last couple of Spurs games uh, with one of my best mates who's an avid Spurs supporter, and you'll see the lineup before, and you'll think, like, shit, like, they've actually, Tottenham is a really good side, you know, and they've got a good bench, and they've got, like, really good individual players here. And it's just, why do these guys, like, consistently perform below the standard that their name implies you know well I, th- I think a lot of that's to do with with the, with the, with the debacle around trying to sell uh, Harry Kane mm. you know it's um, he, he doesn't want to be there it's yeah. you know when, when, when your captain doesn't want to be there you've got a problem yeah and as we've seen they've been you know they're flattered to deceive though saying that they've never kissed their sister this this year they're, they haven't drawn so, a game um, <laughs> Five wins, four losses. At least they're consistent. Yeah, but they've they haven't <laughs> they haven't scored many goals, and and mm. you could always usually count on Tottenham to be entertaining and score goals. This game, you know, it's a game that uh, Man United that 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 Scorsari can't lose. You know, in terms of because the volume will just yeah. keep ratcheting up about uh, him being uh, ousted. Um, so I, I expect a draw in this game. You know, it's two 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 teams that are struggling. Uh, I just expect a draw. I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. I'm going to... I'm going to go 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I think uh, I think both teams will be... You know, look, I think United will be... will be going out to score. And, but equally, I don't think they've got the sort of um, strength and formation to not concede mm. against a team that, regardless of Harry Kane's situation, you know... He's still a brilliant goal scorer. You still got Son there, Lucas Moura, a couple of guys that can really just can bang them in from anywhere on the field. So I do think fairly high scoring, um, not as high scoring as last season when Spurs took United apart six one, but um, too all for me. Okay, and then the last game I think is uh, yeah. Wait, Shakes, what's your? What's oh, your sorry, Shakes, sorry. Yeah, well, I thought I was going to get away with it. I was like, carry on, Kevin. Don't ask me. Don't ask me about this. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to predict. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go with a surprise 2-1 to Manchester United. I think that's because Tottenham, I don't rate them as highly. I don't rate Tottenham as highly. So I think Manchester United 2-1. Um, but Man City is the game I fear for Manchester United. But we'll go with Tottenham and say 2-1 for them. Okay, cool. Um, and then Norwich, we got two more games, eh? Sorry, Norwich versus Leeds. I'll let um, you start off. The relegation, the relegation battle. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say relegation. I would say that Norwich is relegated. So, you know, um, <laughs> well, I mean, it's, what one team is 20th and the other 17th. So I mean, yeah. exactly. Oh, you make your point. You make your point. Um, uh, What's yeah, the, you, you can go for it, Kevin. No, you go for it, Jake. You know, I, I, I was disrespectful last time. You, 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 uh, <laughs> you start. 
You know, I love your opinion. Uh, yeah, I think this game as well. It's based on the way that both teams play on the offensive. I think you can expect both teams to score here, definitely. I think you can expect over 2.5 goals as well. And I think one thing Leeds is not with Norwich is they're not as naive as Norwich is. So I think Leeds walks away winning this one 3-1 and moving away from the drop zone. Yeah, look, I mean, everybody, it's every team's... Uh... It's every team's wish to play Norwich right now. Their team has scored two goals in nine. I think they've conceded 23. They haven't won a game. They're naive. They're, they're, they're not long for this division. And what a, what a game to, to build on, you know, us, us scraping a point from Wolves. Uh, and, yeah, I, I see Leeds winning 3-0, three, 3-1. Three three um, yeah, I'm going to take a 3-1 to Leeds as well. I mean, they got to... They got to pump Norwich. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, everybody else has pumped them, yeah. but, except for Brighton, and I got to point out to some other team. But so then that leads and us with way, what's that? And by the way, guys, the the odds on leads to win is two point one three. You could double your money back. Yeah. Yeah, it's not not a bad bet that. Eh? Aston Villa, sorry, Aston Villa versus West Ham to end the the week. The, the week. Ah, that should be a should be a nice game to watch. Um, sure, West Ham, you know, good win over Spurs last week. Uh, good win over, <laughs> well, I mean, Drew in, in full time, but the first team to knock City out of the in, in five years, you know, from the League Cup. So mm -hmm. um, you got to back you got to back West Ham's form. I think um, I reckon I'm going to take them at two one. Mm. I um. I, I I was glad that Aston Villa played against Arsenal on Friday because then you got a chance to see what the team was like. And I can tell you now, they're much different without Jack Grealish. Um, I think everybody's still waiting to sort of get together and sort of gel. But what the Yeah, they, they, they're they still trying to find an identity, aren't they? It seems to me. Mm. Yeah, they are. They are still trying to find an identity. And Jack Grealish always had that ability to get them further up the pitch to make those passes to sort of draw in fouls as well and they don't have that person anymore and I just think with West Ham what they've shown even yesterday because they didn't start all their best players against Man City but they showed grit I thought how they're dealing with Europa League and as well as the league they're doing really well with that um, I think they're in the top four top five in the league and then in Europa League they top their group so I just think because they've got more tougher skin than what Aston Villa have I think <coughs> West Ham wins this one 2-0. Yeah, I I like uh, West Ham. Hey? They're, they're fourth, actually. So, they, they you know, mm. and uh, it'd be great if they can keep, they can hold serve and keep the pressure up, you know. But, uh, it'd be great if they finish ahead of United. <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, I, I like West Ham to win this one 2-1. I think there's a goal in Aston Villa. Uh, but certainly out of the two, the, the identity, the, the way that they approach the game. And... Yeah, they're an exciting team. I, I like them, man. Well, we're all in agreement there, then. Yeah. Yeah. What, any best bets for the week that you guys are going to look to, to lay down? Um, I think just from an outright perspective, Leeds, uh, you know, the injury list's yet to be released for the two teams. But to double your money on Leeds against Norwich, given just how poor Norwich have been, we know that Leeds can score goals. You know, that's not a bad bet to put down. I think, obviously... You need to check with, in, with a team like Leeds, though, that has a couple of integral plays. You know, make sure that there's no injury doubts before yeah. you're putting down a bet like that. You know, that Rafinha's playing, that Bamford's playing, that, uh, you know, Colin Phillips is playing, because I think Bamford and Phillips are injured. But, yeah, I mean, that's, for me, that, that's definitely a value bet. I, I, I agree with Leeds. I also like... Um I also like Watford over Southampton at at at, at mm. three o three o three zero five to one uh, for your money. Uh, Watford are higher in the in the table than Southampton. Southampton are without Ward pros, and um, you know they're playing at home. Yeah, that wouldn't shock me for that for that one to come in. And I also like Brent Brentford uh, two point seven to beat Burnley. Burnley. It's not uh, a yeah. not a bad tickle for that as well. Well, let's see if we put together Brentford to win, Leeds, Leeds to win, and Watford. And Watford to win. What does that give us? 
That gives us odds of 17.54. Yeah, not bad, eh? So. And if they'd be throwing a West Ham over Aston Villa, you look. Yeah, good. that's what I was thinking of that too. That's <laughs> We're looking at odds of 43, so I'm going to mm. put 50 bucks down on that, just because you never know. You never know. <laughs> Anything that you yeah. fancy there, uh, Shakes? Yep, I am coming up with a winning bet for this weekend. I mean, the, the last one, at least I cashed out just before the last game, but uh, I think this is the one that's going to that's gonna hit home. I'm trying to get it open. Uh, I've gone with a multi-bet. Um, so, firstly, Leicester versus Arsenal. Yeah. Both teams score definitely. I see that happening. And then the next one, I've got Manchester City straight win. I have a feeling Crystal Palace might defend well. I wanted to do handicap, but I'm not sure. Maybe City might only just not win by a higher amount than I think. So I said City straight win, um, just to add to the odds. And then I said Chelsea handicap minus one against Newcastle. I think they'll comfortably deal with them. And last but not least, draw or lead and over 2.5. Those odds are 2.5, funny enough. And uh, my total odds is 9.7. And I put 200 bucks, expecting to get back uh, 2,000 rand. Okay. Uh, before we go, we, we, we omitted one game. <laughs> Wolves Everton. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's easy to forget. That's, uh, that's on Monday. Okay. Uh, sorry to Wolves and Everton fans out there, both of you. Um, I, I like I like Wolves to beat to Everton. I mean, Everton, too many injuries. Yeah. Um, you know, they've been on the side of a couple drubbings. I think they lost Aston Villa 3-0. Mm. They've lost to Watford 5-2. Um, I don't see it changing much. So I'm going to go for a Wolves 2-0 uh, victory over Everton. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to say a 1... Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to go 1-0 to Wolves. Shakes? Yeah, I think you're right. I think one thing that showed that Everton were missing was the Corey. The Corey is very important for them in the midfield. Uh, Richardson come back is a big is a big plus, but I think you're right. I think um, they've got just too many important players out. The Corey, if you've been down, Andre Gomez, and as well as Clavin Lewin. I just think Wolves win this one as well. I think two one, and they're unbeaten in the last four. By the way, Wolves. Um, so big up to them. Absolutely, certainly heading in the right direction. Anyway, guys, thanks for coming in. Good luck with your bets this weekend and uh, chat next week.